Hey guys, I'm here with an A-level video today um, at History Revision Success and we are going to look at an essay plan for your Tudor's paper. So this fits into the year 12 part of the content and is going to answer the question I've put above me, the foreign policy of Henry VII failed to achieve its objectives. Then it would follow something like how far do you agree with this or assess the validity of this view. This is a 25 mark question and requires you to answer in an essay based style. So first of all, before we can even begin, we do need to brainstorm and work out what actually are Henry's aims with foreign policy. Now, I would argue that there are three clear aims. The first one, he wants to secure his throne. He needs to use foreign powers to help him um, to help him deal with the domestic threat. How can he both mute the international and the domestic threat, but also how can he use international foreign powers and foreign policy to help to deal with that domestic threat? The second one is that he can use his foreign policy to try and establish his dynasty. And the third is that he wants to get international recognition. Now, there are some um, parallels across these aims. There are some links. For example, gaining international recognition can be done through establishing his dynasty and through marriage agreements. And equally, international recognition is only going to help him secure his throne. Seeing as I've got three clear aims, this would strike me as the kind of essay that I would, might want to break down into three paragraphs of which I deal each paragraph with one of these aims. If you watch my video on how to structure your essays or any of my essay technique videos, you'll know that there are different kind of structures to apply in different questions. This one really screams to me that should this should be a thematic based essay. One paragraph for each aim, I can deal with each aim individually, I can assess it, how far it's met, and I can move on and then I can reach an overall conclusion. So paragraph one, how far did he succeed in securing the throne through foreign policy? Well, first of all, we can talk about the fact that his marriage to Elizabeth of York managed to unite the houses of Lancaster and York. This in itself is not particularly foreign policy. However, you can um, use your analysis to suggest that this um, impacted and influenced all the foreign players that were kind of involved in, the, in these Wars of the Roses. He also embarked on a tour of the north of England. Um, you can link that somewhat to the north and Scotland, which put off Yorkist pretenders and supporters. Now, he also maintained good relations with France in the beginning, and um, France actually helped to fund Bosworth. So this shows that there are positive relations with France at the beginning of his reign, which would help him to secure the throne and consolidate his power. He also um, had a truce with Scotland. So in 1486, um, he agreed a three-year truce with James III, which meant he had a peaceful relationship with the border and with Scotland at the time of his coming to power, it meant he was able to focus his time securing the throne domestically. And he also, and we can also use an example in 1506, where he really capitalised on Philip of Burgundy's vulnerability and weakness, um, where Philip was forced to shelter from storms, and Henry used this as a moment to get him to agree to various things, one being to hand over Suffolk, who was posing a threat to him um, and his throne. In purple, I've tried to give you the analytic points that I would take from these pieces of evidence. Um, and so I would state the evidence, use a connective like this means that, or this led to, and then use the analytic explanation. Now, at the end of this paragraph, I would try to present a, present a counter argument. This doesn't need to be long, short, one, two sentence section. But on the other hand, if we're considering his ability to secure the throne, we should think about the fact that actually foreign powers are arguably one of the greatest threats to his consolidation of the throne. And that actually Simnel was supported by Ireland and Burgundy. 
It was usual to have Irish antagonism at the time, but it was not usual to have Burgundy against you. The Burgundy were actually England's greatest ally during the Hundred Year War. And so having Burgundy opposed to England at this time was actually very, very, very threatening to, to Henry's position on the throne. Margaret of Burgundy sent over 2,000 mercenaries. Um, and we also know that if we're considering the aspect of securing the throne, that, that Burgundy posed a very personal threat to Henry. You know, it wasn't just about removing um, the king to try and help your own power or help your own motives. It was really quite personal because Margaret's family were the ones who had been essentially deposed. Um, and so there was that personal familial link there, which really made it a threat to, to him being able to secure the throne. In addition, Warbeck was again supported by various foreign powers, Ireland, France, Burgundy and Scotland. Um, so this really could have been a very considerable threat. On the other hand, if you want to link this, perhaps not for this question, but just to put it out there, um, Warbeck did not receive any support from the north of England, notably from, from York itself. So I think that's a very interesting contrast in perhaps how Henry's managed to establish himself domestically versus internationally at this point. Paragraph two, okay. Aim number two, how far was he able to use his foreign policy to establish the dynasty? Well, he married his son, Arthur, to Catherine of Aragon. This shows that the dynasty had been accepted internationally. It was seen as being powerful enough and well-regarded enough to marry into one of the most powerful European families of the time. In addition, he married um, his daughter, Margaret, to James of Scotland, which um, again tried or helped to diminish the threat that Scotland could pose and showed that the dynasty was being accepted as a royal family. He also made a significant number of early treaties which showed the dynasty and, and his family being accepted as the, the rightful monarchs of England. So for example, there was France, there was Scotland and Brittany in 1486, and in 1487, his treaty with the Holy Roman Empire. Now, finally, Henry also managed to maintain a commercial treaty with France while maintaining good relations with his allies in the League at the same time. This shows that he had been accepted across Europe um, by many different places, different countries, and in many different um, regards, military alliances, commercial treaties. He had been accepted as the rightful king. Counter-argument. Now, there were some factors outside of Henry's control that did threaten the dynasty and threaten the dynasty with regards to foreign policy. So for example, the death of Prince Arthur was pretty devastating to foreign policy at the time. It created a very chaotic um, moment, a very difficult moment where conflict with Spain became far more likely. There were lots of disagreements over what was going to happen to Catherine of Aragon and her dowry, which had already been spent by Henry. Um, her father was demanding that to be returned. Lots of uncertainty over that. In addition, the death of Elizabeth of York created uncertainty because um, Henry himself became a bachelor again. And he was competing with other main kind of players on the stage for the marriage market. Now, that again created some conflict internationally. However, I would say in terms of a counter argument, this one's not particularly strong as neither point show any kind of fatal damage to the dynasty. Now, finally, paragraph three, international recognition. So there are so many points you can use for this paragraph, so many pieces of evidence to show that he was internationally well regarded and accepted. First of all, we've got the Treaty of Medina del Campo that was signed in 1489. That was um, most notably the marriage between Arthur and Catherine. The Treaty of Atarp in 1492. Um, this meant that a peace had been agreed between England and France and meant that France would no longer aid any pretenders. That's how you can link it to the fact that he's also securing the throne and preventing um, the link between international and domestic threats. 
He wasn't able to prevent France from annexing Brittany. Um, that's a criticism you can make because he really did try to do that. And that was a failure on Henry's part. However, um, the positives of this kind of do outweigh the negatives, I would say. Then we have the League of Venice in 1496. Now, this is a very significant moment because England joined the Papal States, Venice, Naples, Spain, Milan, and the Holy Roman Empire, all against France, who had invaded Italy. Now, this showed Henry being very widely accepted um, and a major player on the international stage, as well as being recognised by the Pope as the rightful King of England. We've also got the Treaty of Eitan in 1497. This was a seven year peace with Scotland and it ended Scotland's support of Warbeck. Um, we also then have the Treaty of Perpetual Peace in 1502, which extended that peace with Scotland beyond seven years for the lifetime of the monarchs and their heirs. They also both agreed to end border disputes and finally, we have the Treaty of Aschen in 1502, which was a treaty with the Holy Roman Empire. Um, and Henry promised to give Maximilian 10,000 crowns to fund war with Turkey. And the Holy Roman Empire, or Emperor, I should say, agreed to stop harboring um, Henry's enemies. And in this case, it was Edmund de la Pole. Therefore, you can see how through his foreign policy, Henry was really able to stem both international and domestic threat. He was able to use um, diplomacy to create alliances and gain recognition and support. And he was able to be accepted on a major stage as an international monarch um, through marriage alliances and the extension of his dynasty. Um, and that leads me to consider the argument I would take here. Now, I think it's quite clear that if we're thinking about how far his aims were met, I would absolutely agree that his foreign policy objectives were met. Now, I think we could accept there was a period of consolidation. However, overall, he was able to successfully legitimize the Tudor dynasty and um, all the things I previously said, you know, he, he legitimized the dynasty. He was accepted as a major player internationally. He was able to um, use diplomacy to be to, to craft um, alliances, military alliances, commercial treaties, and no foreign power really posed a significant threat once he had managed to stem all of the problems of the pretenders. And he managed to use foreign policy to really significantly reduce the domestic threat that he faced. That's how I would answer this question. Um, please do give the video a like and subscribe to the channel because um, it really supports me. And hopefully I can make some more of these if they're helpful to you.